In a world where more designs equals more money, see how this clever print-on-demand Etsy store is streamlining their business and where they could improve. But first, I'm Jess at Insights by Jess. I dig deep into what makes Etsy stores successful and where they can improve so that you get the full 411 on what's really selling and why. Let's jump in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out this video. I wanted to showcase this as a great example of really streamlining a passive income source because this store is not necessarily creating their own designs from scratch. In fact, when I was researching different stores to do for this video, I looked at a lot of different coffee mug stores since it's been a while since I've featured coffee mugs and I caught my eye on something specific. In fact, you might remember a coffee mug store that I did a video on a few months ago that had this exact coffee mug and it was selling like absolute crazy. So when I was looking for stores, I actually noticed that a lot of stores now have that same coffee mug. And if we skip past the ads here, most of these are the exact same image from different sellers. So this is the store we're reviewing today. This is Bluefish Mugs. This is the store I actually featured in my video before, Sweet, Sweet Morning Mugs. I'll put the card to that store up at the top here for you. This is a different store called Scenaria. Here's Scenaria again. This is actually a different, same kind of concept, but different design from the Presley Co., which is cute. I like that they act at least differentiated that one. And if we keep scrolling down, Alpha Vibes has this exact same thing as well. Here's a different version of the same kind of concept from Ethan Creative Gifts. And so on and so forth. They've This one has changed the wording a little bit. This one has a different tagline, how do you like me now, which is great for capturing people who don't like swear words, but it just keeps going. This is a very, very common, common design. And so I really wanted to address that because that tells me that probably all of these coffee mug sellers have bought that design from somewhere else. They could have bought it from another Etsy seller or from a graphic design software somewhere. And there are definite pros and cons to doing that. But before we dig too much into all of that, let's go over their Etsy store stats. So this store has just over 30,000 sales and they have an average price point of about $22. Their very first feedback here, if I go to their oldest page of feedback, their first feedback is actually from October 27th of 2019. So the end of 2019, that makes this about three years old and some change, not quite three and a half years old. So they are doing pretty good. And if you take all of their sales, their 30,000 sales divided by the three and a half years they've been open at a $22 price point, that puts their approximate annual sales at $195,000 a year. Now that's of course assuming that they're only selling one coffee mug for all of these sales. There's going to be times where they'll get more than one coffee mug and that's going to raise that price up higher. For general reasons, I like to keep these um, estimates pretty conservative. That is a pretty great number, but there are definite things that they can do to improve upon that number and to actually sell more and to sell faster. So if you have been considering this niche, please pay close attention to the tips in this video. But let's take a look here for a second at their storefront. So they actually have 492 listings and they have a pretty good variety. If I sort this by most recent, they have a pretty good variety of designs. I don't see any of those messages that say X number of people have this in their cart, but I see a lot of these green free shipping tags. So that could just be 
um, taking priority in what Etsy decides they're going to show us. So let's take a look at this particular product here. So as you can see, for example, this is in 20 people's carts and it is a bestseller. But when we look at their storefront, it does not say either of those things. So Etsy is definitely um, a little bit temperamental. It's like a hormonal teenage girl with what they decide to show us sometimes. And I can say that because I am I have four daughters and three of them have reached that super fun teenage age range here. So. I'm not being mean. I'm just being a mom when I say that. <laughs> Anyways, um, this is a really, really big seller, right? So let's talk a little bit really quickly about why this is a bestseller when it's clearly not their design. So there's pros and cons to using really popular designs like this in your store. And the number one problem with selling the same design as existing bestsellers is that those bestsellers have already proven to Etsy that they can get those sales. So if there's four different sellers here that are selling the exact same style, the same exact design mug, the ones that Etsy is going to show you first in search results are going to be the ones that get the most sales. So this one and this one and this one are obviously getting more sales than any of these sellers down here. And I want to point out here, this store has 6,000 reviews. This one has almost 8,000 reviews. This one has 3,000 reviews. I'm going to scroll down to some of these other feedbacks here find the same exact design here. Okay, so this one down here only has 13 reviews. This one has 300 reviews. This one has one review, it's brand new. This one has 8, 87 reviews. So they're obviously not as established sellers and they're going to come up lower. This one only has 2000 reviews. All of these are going to come lower in the search results than these top ones that have strong established sales track records. They are bestsellers for a reason. They've earned that bestselling status. So if you are a new seller, your listing is not going to outrank these, these already bestseller listings you are going to need to prove yourself and it's going to take a, a while to climb that search page and it's going to require better SEO, better pricing or something that really does drive people to shop from your store over other stores. And for example, this particular seller, what they've done is they've added a little next day shipping tag here. So when this seller that we're looking at now tried to compete with the seller that I featured a few months ago, this is obviously more established. They have 8,000 feedbacks. This one only has 6,000 feedbacks. They are getting more clicks because in my guess, this is just a guess based on the knowledge that I have, they have a beautiful little circle there that says next day shipping. And if you're searching for a gift, you are going to be looking for something that can ship quite quickly. So that really helps drive people to click on this listing instead of the older listing that has more established sales. The same kind of thing is true with this one, which only has 3000 sales, but still comes up higher than a lot of those other sellers. There's two little things they're doing on their main image that sets them apart. First of all, they say more sizes and colors available. And second of all, it says customize down here at the bottom. And when you click on it, it probably lets you customize the color of the coffee mug. And you can choose, if you get an all white coffee mug, you can choose between 11 or 15 fluid ounces. So it gives you a little bit more options and they are really capitalizing on that. And they're telling you that in their main image. So that drives these three, the OG seller here, and then these two competitors to the top. So I did want to point that out, that you will need something to set you apart and really help you compete with these established sellers who are already getting lots and lots of sales. 
But on the plus side of that, using these existing designs like this can really speed up your working process a lot. So you can buy pre-made clip art or pre-made designs, even from other Etsy sellers that are to just ready to roll and put on your product. For example, this is being shown on a coffee mug. It's a bestseller. It's only a dollar because it is actually just the design. So a lot of people can come and buy this design and put it on a coffee mug and then list it for sale in their shop. And I actually have a video about this particular seller. So I will put that up, that card up in the top here for you if you want to check that out amazing clip art seller. All of her products are actually a dollar and it is really, really paying off in massive amounts of sales. But you can put this design on anything you want. You can put it on a coffee mug. You can put it on a shirt. You can put it on a pillowcase, whatever you want. So it does make it a lot, lot faster to create these products because you're not designing these things from scratch. That actually will allow you to get a larger number of listings up a lot more quickly, especially in a niche like this and many other print on demand niches where the number of designs that you offer really does make a huge difference in your sales. The bigger selection you have, the more your sales are going to grow. But here's the thing. We already know these designs are big sellers and they're popular for a reason. So using these types of designs as a starting point can be a great way to grow. And essentially, you want to find designs that are popular and that sell well, and then you can add your own unique twist, like a new color, a new punchline, a clip art type element, something a little bit different that helps you stand out and set your store apart. For example, this one takes from this general idea and it recreates the design. It's a little bit different and it makes this coffee mug stand out. We see the same thing here with this one. This one is actually coming up ahead in search results of some of these other ones because it's a little bit different. This is adorable. I bet this is brand new and it's not the same kind of design. It just caught my attention. Sorry, I'm letting my ADHD out here. But you can see that some of these have tried to make some changes. And for some people, that's going to really pay off. And for some, it's not. So these are both brand new sellers. And if we let time go on, this one in particular, might really start climbing because it doesn't feature a swear word. And even though the swear word is super funny, there's reasons why people may avoid that coffee mug. If you're buying it for a coworker, you're probably not going to buy them one with a swear word, but you can buy this one instead, which is still funny and it's work appropriate. I also want to make sure I mention that coffee mugs are a super, super competitive niche. There's a lot of coffee mug sellers out there. There's more coming out every single day. So pricing is really important and you want to make sure that you're pricing your mugs competitively. You also might want to consider running Etsy ads so that your products can appear up towards the top. All of these are ads. So you can see this one only has 18 feedbacks. This one has only 920 feedbacks, but they're here because they are running ads. They're promoting this. If you see this whole row here, these are also all ads. So they may be established sellers. This one is an established seller. This one has only been around, they only have 100 feedbacks and this one is just under 700 feedback. So do not make this design, by the way. This is not a good example. This will probably get your sh shop in trouble at some point because this is a, um, I don't even know if I wanna say what this is from, but I think we can all recognize what this is from. So please avoid those types of designs. Those will probably eventually get your store flagged and potentially shut down. But in cases of ads, you can see that they have landed where they are because they are an ad. So if you're brand new in the coffee cup niche, running ads can definitely help you compete with those bigger sellers. And I'm really considering doing an 
a video specifically about Etsy ads and good examples, bad examples, etc., of when to or when not to use ads and things like that. If you feel like that would be helpful, please comment down below so that I can know if you want to see a video about ads, what questions do you have about ads and all of that good stuff. So let's go back to their storefront here because I wanted to point out that a lot of their products are personalized products. So they are relying very heavily on personalization. And that is a really powerful way to build your sales, but it does slow down your work process a lot. So you, every time you sell a personalized design, you have to make that design and then you have to go into your POD manufacturer's website, like Printify, for example, upload the design to the product and then place the order. But if you have really good selling products, like for example, this one that are not personalized, they can be completely passive products. So do you consider that when you're making designs? If you want to start out with getting sales rolling very quickly, doing personalized designs can really help you to do that. But you will want to integrate some non-personalized designs as well so that you can really speed up your working process and not bog yourself down with designing. So looking at this non-personalized design, we can see that this is relatively popular. It's in 12 people's carts. It doesn't have the bestseller tag quite yet, but let's talk about this listing's SEO. Their main image is fantastic. It focuses right on the design. The background is not distracting. It's pleasant looking. And they have their perfect little next day shipping badge right there, easy to see. Then they have the video, and the video is okay. It's reasonably well done. However, I could see some definite room for improvement here. This text that keeps popping up at the bottom, if I let it replay, it's small and it's difficult to read. What I would do, since they have this massive section of sky right here, is I would just put a banner across the whole top portion of this video and add that text up at the top so that people can see it's printed on both sides. It's the graphics will not fade. I would actually put dishwasher safe, high quality mugs, all of these good messages that they have here. I would be putting them up at the top where it's easy to read in a headline type format. Looking at their other images, this is really cute. They showcase the different sizes and colors, which is smart. Another size comparison here. Another example, I love that they added the little dog in there for a little cuteness factor. And they have a great banner that says glossy finish with vivid colors. A little bit of a features image. More examples. And then this is a great image here because it says free shipping on all mugs, shop with confidence. So I love that they are encouraging you to feel confident in their customer service. They say they will promptly resolve any issues with your order. I love that, very smart. Another example that says vibrant colors on it. And then a thank you for supporting my small business image. So very great. I love those images. They did a good job choosing those. Let's look at their title. So right off the bat, I can see a typo. It says, know my problema. And it's supposed to say, not my problema. So that's a little bit of a bummer that there is a typo. Let's look at the title and see if maybe they just had limited spaces. Okay, 130 characters in the title, so they definitely could have added that T. They were not filling up all of the space, so I would fix that. Other than that, I feel like they've got a good amount of variety in here. They've got funny coffee mug, which is really big, birthday gift, llama gift, funny llama mug, quote coffee mug, gift for her, office gifts, gifts for him, etc. I would potentially see if there was a way to mention tea in here because sometimes people don't drink coffee, they drink tea. 
and I would maybe do a little bit of competitor research and E-rank or key search and see which of those words are best swapped out. Which of these terms do they have in here that they could put T in instead with out sacrificing search volume or quality. And I do actually have a brand new, fun new little SEO cheat sheet in my freebie section at the link in the description down below. So make sure if you haven't snagged that already, go snag that, check out all my other freebies. It's really, really got some great stuff in there to help you guys sell more or sell better, or sell faster, depending on your niche different stuff in there for everyone, hopefully. And if you're feeling generous and want to buy me a coffee while you're there, that really does help support this channel and help this channel grow. So let's take a peek at their description. Again, they have their typo here. So no, my problem, funny coffee mug. And I really wonder if this is intentional or if they just copy pasted it, but then they jump right into mug details, they talk about the specs of the mug. There is no SEO really here except for this short little line, which is not even spelled correctly because they missed the T and not my problema. However, if they put this into a sentence, they could easily talk about how this not my problema funny coffee mug is dishwasher safe and sure to make anybody laugh. It is the best gift idea, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. It can easily be worded into a sentence that is appealing and SEO optimized. So I would really work on improving that. And then if we look at the end here, you can see that they are really keyword stuffing the end of their description. Now, I would not suggest doing that. I think that towards the end of your description, none of this text matters very much. And I've seen a couple of sellers actually do this at the end here. I have not seen it really pay off for any of the sellers that do that. I think that what we put in the beginning of our description is important, and that's mostly for Google search purposes. But Google is not really reading or SEO optimizing their results based on the end of your product description. It's just not very relevant. So I would focus on the beginning of your description instead. Let's take a peek at their tags. There is definite room for improvement with these tags. They have a lot of very super short tags like llama, llama mug, coffee, mug, gifts. This one especially would be the first one that I've removed out of here because it is so big and so broad that it is not helping your conversion rates at all. And it can actually harm you more than it can help you. If we scroll down, we see gift mug. This is better. Coffee mug gift, much better. Llama gifts for women, amazing. This is a great, great tag. It's super specific and your sales conversion rate is going to be much higher on this. Anyhow, some of these tags are super, super short and they are really just wasting your opportunity for visibility. So with that bit of wisdom, I'm actually going to invite you to check out this hilarious print on demand store that has designs just flying into everyone's carts. And you can check that out here.